Frenchie Megan and this is Sensei Ryder and today's tutorial is going to be on side kicks, Yoko Gary. And we're going to cover side thrust kicks, not side snap kicks today. So we're going to go Kokomi Yoko Gary. So that is side thrust kick. We're going to cover just from the belt up because in our curriculum and in traditional karate, those lower side kicks are meant for different applications. So while we're training in class, while we're improving our skill sets, everything is above the hip. Predominantly in traditional karate, we focus mostly on the chest midsection chudan area for our side kicks. So today's focus is going to be on midsection side thrust kicks. Sensei Ryder has tons of flexibility. He may be throwing some chudan kicks just to challenge everybody, to work on their flexibility, see if they can get their chambers a little bit higher, and you guys can try to work on your chudan height and your jodan height as you continue to improve in your martial arts journey. So, just to start off with, make sure you're all loosened up, you've done a nice good stretch, right? You've gone through our traditional stretching video, you've worked on, you know, horse riding stance, you've worked on adductors, hip flexors, glutes, hamstring, quad stretches, before you perform any of your kicks or it's going to hurt. Me with old hips, I need to make sure that I stretch before I do anything. So we're gonna cover rear leg side kick, foot to foot side kick, lead leg side kick, and step behind side kick. Those are the kicks that we use more often in our curriculum and honestly, those simple kicks are super, super, super effective, especially a thrust kick. Using the bottom of your foot, more of your heel, they're powerful. If you're sparring, they stop people from coming forward. They work great when it's a retreating kick. They help you to establish an extra couple of seconds. You can follow through with a double kick or with your hands after. But they definitely keep you safe. If you can side kick someone away from you, they can't punch you in the face. So that's how we're gonna start our tutorial today. To warm up, we need to focus on the four points. Chamber, extension, re-chamber, and then back into your position with balance and stability, right? So we're gonna work on pulling that chamber up. With that being said, we want you to pull your knee up over your belt or as high as you can go, but really it is the bottom of the foot moving towards the direction that you need to hit. So if you feel like you have a flexibility issue and you can only get your knee about this high, your foot should not be down here. You should work towards trying to pull your foot up so that you can kick with the right part of the foot to the appropriate target, okay? In a perfect world, your knee and your foot are on the same plane and you can hit that target accurately with an, an effective and appropriate chamber. So, I want us to work on just lifting that chamber and coming back. So since the rider's gonna show up from his left leg, I'm gonna show up from my right. We want everyone to practice with both sides. So what we're gonna be working on first, we're gonna use a chair to balance. You guys can do this without hanging on to anything. You can grab a piece of wall if you want, or you can grab a chair just to work on building those muscles. Side kicks take a lot of extra glute, lower back, abs, and obliques, right? Especially obliques because you're using your oblique to crunch. Pull your leg up. Make sure your forehead is going the direction that you want it to go. If your head is leaning back, that's where all your balance and power are going to go too. So if I'm kicking to the side and I lean my head backwards, my kick is sloppy, my balance is way off, and all my power goes behind me. So of anything else, even if your body needs to go back, so you can try to pull your chamber up more and get your kick a little higher, your chin and your forehead needs to be going the direction of your kick, okay? So all we're gonna do uh, today to start off with is we're gonna balance on our object, we're gonna keep our guarding hand with our elbow tucked into our oblique, and we're gonna do the first step. We're gonna pull our leg sideways up to chamber. So with our balancing, we're gonna go itch. Chamber up, we're gonna balance, guard is in, right, and back down. We're gonna do it again, up, and back down. Again, up, and back down. One more time, if you can do it with both hands up, pull up your chamber, hold, Work on the stability of your supporting leg. You should be gripping into the floor. You should be crunching forward. Everything going the direction of your kick and back down. Now we're gonna go into the four points. So we're gonna bring our leg up into chamber. We're gonna go extension, re-chamber, and back down. 
I like to use a stability object while I'm training and practicing because I think that isometrics, which is from the chamber to extension and back, is very, very important for building up all the muscles required to have a powerful, stable kick. But if you're constantly trying to rebalance all the time, you're not gonna be able to focus on those, those muscles that you really need to concentrate on to perform this kick accurately, properly, and with power. So don't feel bad if you need some stability. Guard is up, we're gonna do slow motion, four point side kicks. Now it's a side thrust kick. So Kokomi Yokogari and go nice and slow from one chamber, two extension, three re-chamber, four down with balance. Guard, lead hand is tucked with your elbow right into your obliques, forehead and chin forward. So ready, chamber up one, extension two, re-chamber three, and down four. Up, chamber up, extension two, re-chamber three, down four. And again, chamber up, extension, chamber back, and down. Now we're gonna do the four point kick a little bit faster, so you can hold on to the chair. We'll do the four points, not just the isometric, and then we'll show you with it with the isometric afterwards. So let's do four, going slow, but putting everything together. So since you're right when I count one, we're gonna go, okay? So chamber up, everybody else at home, get ready. Look the direction that you're kicking. So itch, knee, sand, chi, and go. Good, now we're gonna show you 10 isometrics. Ryder's doing it with the left side, I'm gonna show you on the right side. If you really, really want to improve the strength in this kick, and I recommend this every single day, trying to work from 20 a day to 30 to 40 to 50 to 100 if you can, isometrics are crazy important. Challenge yourself to go more powerfully, challenge yourself to go slower, and challenge yourself to go higher. We're only going to perform 10 right now, but that is your homework to practice more and more isometrics as you continue your martial arts journey. So. We're gonna use our chairs for balance. Yep, just the isometric. So from chamber to extension. Itch, knee, sand, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, cue, chew and down. As I'm wearing my traditional gi, my traditional uniform, my pants don't have as much give as the, the, uh, the kickboxing and karate fight suits. They allow for a much higher chamber, they allow for a different kind of extension where I'm not kind of playing with the stretchiness of my traditional pants. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate foot to foot side kick first. So as this is the kick that's going to be on everyone's belt level from white belt to black belt, but it is a white belt predominant technique that you need to know for your first testing. Please practice this. So guard is up. What we're going to do is we're gonna do a foot to foot side kick, land in front, and then back up into position again. You don't wanna fall backwards in any of these kicks, okay? They're not a retreating kick. They are an aggressive kick. Foot to foot side kick. So I'm gonna do Chudan, Kokomi, Yoko, Gary. Okay, etch. Knee, Shh. sand, Shh. chi, Shh. go, Shh. good. So that is foot to foot side kick. You guys need to be practicing on both legs, improving strength on both sides of your body and making sure that you are very proficient at this. You have tons of balance, tons of power and tons of confidence when you're performing it. It's very important to keep that guard up, that shin forward, right? And lots of stability in your balancing leg. We're gonna now do rear leg side kick. So this is the second version of your um, Kokomi Yokogari that you're required to know for the karate curriculum. So it starts from a uh, sparring stance. I think Sensei Ryder and I are both gonna perform it with our right legs just to demonstrate for everybody else. 
So it comes from the back leg all the way around, extension, and then back into stance, but coming forward. Okay, so we're gonna land forward after each one of our kicks and then return back into our sparring position. So this is a rear leg side kick, side thrust kick, not snap kick. So use the bottom of your foot, really emphasizing striking with the heel. So itch, itch. knee, itch. sand, Cheat. Woo! And go. I wish martial arts was perfect and I always had the best balance, most perfect power, best chamber, everything. But sometimes, you know what? I'm going slow, I'm focusing on the camera and I wobble a little bit and that's why it takes a ton of practicing. So now we're gonna go lead leg side kick. So the difference between a foot to foot and a lead leg is you're actually just propping up your front leg and you're kicking with it from a very, very comfortable lead leg sparring stance. So lead leg side kick is what you predominantly throw in point fighting or in kumite. So we're just picking up that lead leg, throwing that four point side kick. Itch, itch. And we're weight transferring on our back leg before we throw up that lead. Knee, itch. San, itch. Chi, itch. And go. Good job, okay. Now, I like a step behind side kick. We don't actually use it very often. It's mostly for an incredibly aggressive circumstance or we need to cover a lot of distance with a lot of momentum and obviously a lot of aggression. So that step behind side kick would be for a power break or if you really need to cover a large section of the mat in order to hit your target with as much force and power and thrust as you possibly can. So you don't throw the step behind side kick very often as it is a strange distancing type of kick, but it's still very important to learn and practice and be able to get some momentum and extra power from it in case you need to have that extra tool in your toolbox. So we're gonna have our guard up. It's a step behind. So we start in a lead leg sparring stance. You're gonna step behind and then you're gonna throw your side kick and land in front. And then we're gonna move back again. Okay, this time I'll count for you, Sensei Rider. So uh, I'm gonna move my chair back actually so I can cover a little more distance with this step behind side kick. It requires a little more distancing. So itch, itch and back, knee, itch, and back, and sand, itch, and back, cheat, itch, and back, go. And I kind of like this one because I get to go a little faster. The step behind gives me tons of momentum. It actually helps me to look like I have more flexibility because the momentum of moving forward helps to bring my chamber up and helps you uh, chamber and kick a lot higher than I normally would if I'm spending all my time and energy balancing on a supporting leg. So just for funsies, especially if I want to nail a heavy bag super hard, that step behind side kick is pretty fun. The two that we haven't covered today is a reverse side kick as well as a jumping flying side kick. Those are advanced techniques. They're a little more difficult to perform in a small space or to do in a very small tutorial, but in the future we'll show you how to break those down so that you can practice and obviously have all of the special and important kicks that you need to have in order to feel like a strong, confident martial artist. So hopefully you enjoyed a side thrust kick so Kokomi Yoko Gary, right? To chew down section and to Jodan section. So happy practicing and we'll see you for the next video.